This is Landon Schlung here again, coming back to you with another video. Today, we're going to learn more about CSS pseudo selectors by building a balance sheet. And this will be very useful because pseudo selectors are used to change elements on hover or on mouse, or like when you click on a button, then it will actually like change it a little bit or whatever you want, basically. So there's uh, lots of challenges here, 65. So let's get started. Here's a preview of what we're going to make. Looks like this, a balance sheet. So 2019, 2020, 2021, hash checking savings total. As you can see it when I hover over it, it highlights. Uh, there must be some other highlights here, or a couple more. Uh, but it doesn't really look like, maybe if I click somewhere. Not really sure, but there is that hover effect. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. All right, so the first step, we're going to do this doc type HTML thing again, looks like. So. We'll start with that doc type of HTML. And then we need a head and a body. Okay, so we'll go head, head and a body, slash body. And then inside the head, we need a uh, meta elements for char set and viewport and a title elements. All right, so we need uh meta char set equal to utf8 like so i'm trying to remember and then we need meta viewports something can't really remember but hopefully when i hit check your code it will tell me <laughs> that's what i'm banking on at least and then uh let's just go title and slash title and give it a title of balance sheet Sounds good. Don't cheat. And then let's just see what they say here. I also forgot a Y there. Uh, should have with a lang attribute of English. Oh yeah, I need HTML elements. Oh yeah. So I need an HTML element wrapping around all of this with a lang of English. Lang equals English. And then the ending HTML tag. All right, now let's try it. Okay, yeah, I need the width, device width, initial scale. Um, name set to viewport. Okay, so name is viewport. And then the content. Okay, so I need content equals whatever that was. So I'm going to paste it in there. Width equals device width. Okay, yeah, let's try that. Okay, your code should also have a link. Okay, so we also need a link to the CSS. So a link. Uh, uh, ref equals style sheets and then uh, href equals dot slash styles dot CSS. All right, let's see if that works now. Uh, I need a rel attribute, not ref, rel. Okay. Yay. Okay. Finally passes. <laughs> nice. Oh man. Lots of code for the first, uh, first step. All right. Within your body element, nest the section element within a main element. Okay, that's pretty easy. So we need main first. And then inside of our main elements, we need a section element. Section slash section. There we go. Should be good. Awesome. Within your section element, add an h1 element with a nested span element. All right, so we need an h1 with a nested span. So we'll go span in here. Oh my gosh, spelling slash h1. All right. Screen readers announce HTML elements based on the document flow. We will eventually want the balance sheet to have a heading of balance sheet and a subheading of Acme Widget Corp. However, this order does not make sense if announced by a screen reader. Give your existing span the class attribute set to flex. All right, so we'll go class equals flex. And then, and add two span elements within it. So we'll go two span elements. Span, copy that down with alt shift down. All right, give the first the text Acme Widget Corp. Easy enough. Control C, Control V. Uh, give the second the text balance sheet. All right, same thing. Control C, Control V. Uh, you will use CSS to reverse the order of the text on the page, but the HTML order will make more sense for a screen reader. Okay, interesting. All right, below your H1 elements, create a div element. All right, so we'll go div. Give it an ID attribute set to years. All right, easy enough. We'll go years. 
right? You want this particular element to be hidden from screen reader, so give it aria hidden attributes set to true. All right, so we're just going to add this attribute of aria hidden set to true, like so. Should be good. Nice. All right, within your div element, add three span elements. All right, so we'll go span, span, three of those. Give each of them a class attribute set to year. I'll shift down. Um, actually, no. Control Shift K to delete a line. Uh, Alt Control down to give me more cursors, and then I can do class equals year, and then 2019, and then we need 2020 and 2021. All right, 2020, 2021. All right, awesome. Below your existing div element, add a new div element with a class set to table wrap. All right, so we'll go div class equals Table wrap, wrap, holy balls. Okay, <laughs> this will be the container for your tables. Okay, within that add three table elements. Okay, so we'll go table slash table and add three of those. You'll be using CSS to style these into a single table, but using separate tables will help screen readers understand the document flow, okay. HTML tables use the ha caption element to describe what the table is about. The caption element should always be the first child of a table, but can be positioned with the caption side CSS property. Add a caption element to your first table. All right, so we'll go caption, and we'll give it a, give it some text of assets. All right, so in here we'll just put assets. Should be good. Nice. All right, the T head and T body elements are used to indicate which portion of your element table is the header and which portion contains the primary data of content. Add a T head and a T body to your first table below the caption elements. Yep, all right. So T head for our headers and T body for our data, basically. All right, and then below that, we need our T body slash T body. Nice, okay. The TR element is used to indicate a table row. Add a TR element below your T head element. In your new TR element, add a TD element followed by three TH elements. All right, so T head, we need um, table row slash table row. Um, within your T, in your T, new TR element, add a TD. So TD is uh, table data. So we'll add that followed by three TH elements. Okay, so the first one is table data and then 3th. Is that what it wants? I think. We'll see. So three of those. TD indicates a data cell while TH element indicates a header cell. Yep. Okay, that is what they want. Awesome. Within each of your new TH elements, nest a span element with the class set to SR only year. Okay. Each of your new TH elements nest a span. Okay. Give me some more cursors. It's a span. Okay, and then we need that class set to SR only. So class equals SR only year. Give them the following text in order. Okay, so we need 2019, 2020, and 2021. Okay. Leave the, oh, you know, give your third TH element the class attribute set to current. Okay, so this one needs current. And then leave the TD element empty. This element exists only to ensure your table has a four column layout. Okay. Oh, what the heck? Your third TH element should have a class set to current. Oh, TH. I see. I see. Sneaky, sneaky. We need class on the TH. All right, that should be good. Nice. All right, within your T body element, add four TR elements. So for table row, so it looks like we're gonna have four rows of data. Uh, give the first three a class attribute set to data. Okay, first three class of data. And the fourth, a class set to total. All right. Um, I thought that would work. Darn it. <laughs> I, by pressing escape, didn't really work very well. All right. And this one should be total. All right. Let's try that out. Awesome. 
in your first TR add a TH element with the text cache. This is the cache we currently have on hand. Okay, so let me copy that. Add a TH element for this data. Okay, so TH, and then we'll add that text and the TH. And then wrap all of that text except cache in a span element. Okay, so we need all this in a span. Um, and a class set to description. Okay, so also it needs a class of description. Description. Okay, and then following that, add three TD elements. Okay, so we need three TDs uh, with the following text in order 25, 30, and 28 dollars. 25, 30, and 28. Give the third TD element class attribute set to current. Read class equals current. Okay, so yeah. Uh, so we have that first one, the first row. Uh, it doesn't have a header, remember? So that's why we do TH there. And then the last three are actual uh, ones with the table headers. So that will line up correctly. Uh, yes. Awesome. I think that's it. Yep. Okay, in your second TR element, add a TH element with the text checking or prime here, wrap that text except for checking. Uh, okay, let's just grab this part of it then. And actually, I should just copy this. That'd make it easier, I think. Let's copy this part and bring it down and then just replace the text. Okay, so this has to be checking. And then this has to be this part. So let me copy that again, because I don't have it in my clipboard anymore. All right, uh, wrap that test. Uh, okay, description, yep. Uh, add three TD elements, yep. And then we need 54. Oh uh, man, 54, 56, and 53, and then class of current, yeah, okay. Pretty simple. All right, for your third, Basically do the same thing, looks like. Okay, let me just grab this again. Let me grab this bad boy. Copy, paste. This time it's savings. So saving, uh, savings. And then funds set aside for emergency. And then we have 500, 650, and 728. 500, 650, 728. Okay, and then, oh, I actually copied two of these. I don't need this parts. Okay, I think that's it. Let's try it. Yay, awesome. All right, in your fourth TR element, add a TH element with the text total assets, and then do that much, okay. So let's grab this part. Not both of them this time. And then we'll just do total assets. So this has to be assets. And then this has to be 579, um, 736, and 809. And that should be good. Nope, never mind. Span element needs a class of SR only. So this one with the class attributes set to SR only instead of description. SR only. Let's try it now. Awesome. All right, time to move on to your second table. Start by giving it a caption element set to liabilities. Okay, caption, 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 and give it uh, some liabilities. Give it liabilities, yes. Liabilities. All right, then add a T head and T body. Okay, T head and a T body. Oh my goodness, T body. T body. Okay, should be good. Nice. All right, within your T head, add a TR. Inside that, add a TD and three TH elements. 
Oh my goodness, we're basically doing the same thing. Okay, I'm just gonna try and grab that from up here, this part. I wonder if it'll work like even with extra stuff in it or if it wants me to do less. Let's try that. Oh, it works awesome. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Give each TH element a span element with the class set to SR only and the following text. Okay, give me that stuff from up here again. <laughs> Just copy this twice. And paste it. Amazing. Um, oh shoot! Inside of here. Let's try again. Yay! <laughs> okay. Then the T body element at four TR elements. Oh my gosh! This is annoying. The first three class attributes set to data. The fourth class attributes set to total. Oh my goodness, give me, give me something. Okay, where is it? This stuff? No. I need this one, don't I? Set the total and the fourth one set the total. Oh, yeah, I'll just write this one out. I might as well. Okay, within T body, we need four TR elements. All right, TR, four of these. The first three class attributes set to data. Class equals data. And then the fourth class attribute set to total. Yep, class equals total. Awesome. All right, within your first TR element, add a TH element with the text loans, the outstanding, okay. Within my first TR. I'm just going to copy from up here. I'm going to copy this one. Actually, it's probably going to be a description one, so I'm going to grab this one actually. All right. Let's go here. And then we need loans. So here's loans. And then the outstanding balance. So we'll copy that. Put it in here. Uh, wrap that text except for loans. Yep. And then it's description. So we need 500, 250, and zero. Class attribute set to current. Okay. Should be good. Nice. All right. And then we basically want the same thing. So I'm going to copy this and put it here. And we need expenses. Expenses. We need annual anticipated expenses in place of this. And then we need 200, 300, 400. 200, 300, and 400. Okay, see if that works. Yippee. All right, same thing. Oh my gosh, this one is so repetitive. Just got to grind this out. All right, we need credit. Give me that. Uh, instead of expenses, and then we need the outstanding balance. Give me that. Paste it here. And then we need a 50, 50, 75. All right, 50, 50, and 75. Okay, try that out. Awesome. All right, now the fourth one, I need the totals. So I'm going to grab this total one and copy that. I think we're going to have to do this one more time too, which kind of sucks. Um, total liabilities. Grab that instead of assets. And then we need 750, 600. You know, 750, 600, 475. 600 and 475. All right, check it. Awesome. Mm. It's slowly building up. So now we have three tables. Okay, so our third table. Add a caption, text of net worth. All right, where's my other caption? Give me that. Give me that bad boy. Paste it in here. Give me that net worth. Copy. Paste. Quick. Go. Oh, oh, I need a, what was it? I need a table head. Oh my gosh, I have to actually type that out. All right. Uh, T head. T head. T body, 
empty body. Okay, this should work now. All right, within your T head, we need T enrollments. And add three TH. All right, so TR. Okay, actually, yeah. Give me, give me the uh, copied part of this. I need TR and then TH. Yeah, okay, this one. All right. Paste. Check it. Awesome. Okay. Gosh darn it. <laughs> then the T body. Same thing. Gosh darn it. This is so annoying. Uh, the class set to total. TH set to hex net worth. Oh my gosh. Okay, within the T body, add a TR with class set to total. Add a TR class equals total. Slash TR. Okay, in that, add a TH with the text total net worth. Wrap net worth in a span. All right, so we need a TH with this text and then net worth in a span, I'm pretty sure. So let's just do span there. And then inside of this, we need a class of SR only. So R only. Okay. And then add three TD elements, giving them, giving the third a class set to current. All right. Let's grab some TD elements here. Let's grab those guys, paste them underneath the TH, and then we need negative 171, 136, 136, and what was the other one? 334. Let's try that out. Awesome. All right. Finally, time to style our tables. Let's go. Time to style your table, start by resetting the box model. All right, create an HTML selector. So we'll go HTML and we'll go box sizing, uh, set to border box, like so. Should be good. Awesome. Create a body selector and give it a font family. All right, we'll go grab our body, go font family, uh, sans serif, sans serif, color set to 0A. Uh, 0A, 23. Blue. Should be good. Awesome. All right. Before you get too far into your styling, you should make use of the SR only class. You can use CSS to make elements with this class completely hidden from the visual page, but still be announced by screen readers. Oh, I see. So it's SR only stands for screen reader only. I see. Okay, the CSS you're about to write is a common set of properties used to ensure elements are completely hidden visually. Span class, okay, selector. So I'm guessing I'm going to have to use that. Let's paste that in. We'll select any span element whose class includes SR only. Create this that selector and give it a border property set to zero. Okay, so border of zero. Um, let's see if that works. It seems like it does. Awesome. Okay. The CSS clip property is used to define the visible portions of an element. Set the span class director to have a clip property. All right, so we're going to go clip equals this rect of one pixels everywhere. All right, the clip path property determines the shape the clip property should take. Set both the clip path and WebKit property to the value of inset 50%. Okay. So we'll go clip path of that value and web kit, kit path, web kits, clip path, set in sets 50%. Not really sure exactly what that does, but they want us to do it. All right, now you need to size these elements down. Give your span a width and height property set to one pixel. So width of one pixel, height of one pixel. Anything change? I don't see anything change. Uh, to prevent tech content from overflowing, give your an overflow of hidden. All right, overflow of hidden and a white space property of no wrap. Okay, let's try that out. Awesome. 
Alright, so finally, we need to take these hidden elements out of the document flow. Alright, so I think this is when we'll actually see a change. Uh, do position property set to absolute. Alright, so position set to absolute. And a padding property. Yeah, something changed there. What changed? We are missing something. What the heck is... Okay, I don't... Something's changing. I don't think any text is actually getting hidden, but like some space is... Okay, I don't know. All right, we'll go padding of zero and a margin of negative one pixel. Okay. Uh, this will ensure that not only are they no longer visible, but they are not even within the page view. That's a lot of CSS for just that. That's weird. All right, time to style your table heading. Create an H1 selector. All right. Give it a max width property of 37.25 rem. And a margin property set to zero auto. And then a padding property of 1.5 rem and 1.25 rem. All right, so there's our beautiful header. It works. All right, target your flex container with h1 flex. All right, so h1 dot flex. Give it a display property set to flex. Yep, and then we're going to do column reverse. Yep. Um, yes, flex direction of column reverse. The direction, column reverse. And then they should switch spots and also be in a column. That's awesome. Okay. Finally, set gap property. Gap to one rem. And that should give us a gap. Nice. All right. The first of type pseudo selector is used to target the first element that matches the selector. Create an H1 uh, flex span first of type. All right, let's copy that. To target the first span elements in your flex container. Remember that your span elements are reversed visually, so they will appear as second element on the page. Give your new font size property. All right, so font size of 0 0.7 rem. Make it look like a subheading. Okay, awesome. Oh, what the heck? Font size M. No R. Awesome. The last of type pseudo selector does the exact opposite. It targets the last element that matches the selector. Create an H1 last of type selector. All right. Easy enough. We're going to probably grab balance sheet here. Um, font size of 1.2M. 1.2M. There it is. Make it a little bigger. All right. You wrapped your table in a section element. Now you can style that to give your table a border. Create a section selector, section, um, and then give it a max width, max width of 40 rem, and then set the margin property to set zero auto, and then set the border to two pixel solid. So we'll see a solid uh, gray border, D0, D0, D5. Yep, so there's our gray border, cool. All right, the last part of your table heading is, is your years. Create a hashtag year selector. So that's, we're grabbing it by its ID. And enable Flexbox, so display flex. Justify the content to the end, so we'll go justify content, end. And then make the element sticky. Make the element sticky oh, by doing top of zero. Maybe that'll work. Oh, flex end. Yeah, just end, flex end. Uh, and then position, oh, position of sticky. I see, yep. Position sticky. Now it should work. Awesome, okay. Now apply some color to your years. Make the text hashtag FFF and the background to that. So sticky, I think. Well, it doesn't really scroll, so I can't really show, but. If I were to scroll, I think it will like stick to the top. I think that's what that does. All right, so we're going to need a color 
uh, oh, make the text white. So we'll go hashtag FFF and background color of this hashtag 023. So we'll just paste that in. Awesome. Give it a nice header. Calc function is a CSS function that allows you to calculate a value based on other values. For example, you can use it to calculate the width of the view port minus the margin of an element. Okay, yep. Ensure your years do not get hidden by setting a Z index of 999, then give it a margin of zero. Okay. Make sure our years don't get hidden. So we need a Z index. A Z index of 999. And give it a margin of zero, negative two pixels. Zero on the Y, negative two on the X. And then padding of 0 0.5 rem and calc. Uh, so the top, wait, no, on the right, 1.25 rem plus two pixels. And then 0 0.2, wait, no, 0 0.5 rem and zero. Okay, that looks pretty cool, pretty good, pretty good. All right, style the text within your years element by creating a hashtag years span class selector. All right, so let's do that. The span class syntax will target any span element that has a class attribute set, uh, regardless of its value. Okay, give your new selector a bold font. All right, so we want font style, bold. Or no, font weight, font weight, oops, font weight, bold. And a text align to the right. So we'll go text align right. Uh, did that do anything? My goodness. Span class with property. Oh, I need width. Oh, width of 4.5. Yeah, you're right, okay. Width of 4.5 rem. Okay, ah, I see, that was this. Awesome. All right, you wrapped your tables in container with the table wrap class. Create a selector for that class. Okay, so table wrap. And then give it a padding of zero. Oh, 0 0.75 rem. 1.5 rem. And 0.75 rem. All right, should be good. Nice. All right, before you start diving into the table itself, your span elements are currently bolded. Create a span not SR only. And give it a font weight property set to normal. Font weight of normal. All right, the not pseudo selector is used to target all elements that do not match the selector, in this case, any of your span elements that do not have the SR only class. This ensures that your earlier rules for the span selector are not overwritten. Okay, cool. Rather than having to constantly double check you are not overwriting your early properties, you can use the important keyword to ensure these properties are always applied regardless of order to specificity. Give each property selector an important keyword. Do not change any values. Yep, so after all of these, we can just add important and that will always be applied uh, because it is important, obviously. So all of these, we just gotta add important and it should be good so that they will not be overridden. Overwritten. Yeah. Okay. Now that you have added the important keyword, you can remove the SR not from your selector. Yeah, I can just do span. And it should basically do the same thing. All right, create a table selector to target your tables. All right, set the border collapse property to collapse. All right, so let's grab our table, set border collapse to collapse, and yeah, makes it a little smaller, which will allow cell borders to collapse into a single border instead of a border around each cell. Also set the border property to zero, border to zero. We almost always use border collapse collapse for tables. Ensure your table fills its container with a width property set to 100%. All right, yep. Also with 100% is pretty useful. And then position it relatively. Position 
relative and a top margin of 3m. So go margin top of 3rem. Cool. So there, there's space between the tables. Next, you need to style your caption elements to look more like headers. Create a table caption selector. Okay. Uh, give me my cursor table caption. Set the text to have a color. Okay, so color of hashtag 356 EAF. And then a size, so font size of 1.3 M and a normal weight, so font weight, weight of normal for our captions. So now assets, liabilities look pretty cool. Now give the caption an absolute position and shift them from the top in 0 0.5 rem from the left. All right, absolute position. So position, absolute, and shift them from the top. So top of negative 2.25 rem and left of 0 0.5 rem. Okay, so there, we have our assets and liabilities there now. Create a selector to target your TD elements within your table body. Okay, so we'll go TD elements. Give them a width to fill the viewport. So width of 100%. With a minimum and maximum of 4 rem. So minimum width of 4 rem. Um, and a maximum. Okay. Or rem. Whereas this approach ensures that the width is fixed, whereas setting width specifically would allow the elements to shrink to a container because we are using Flexbox. Okay, I think that's okay. T body TD. Oh, my baddie. My, my bad. T body. There we go. Looks weird. 100 view width, not 100%. Okay, awesome. All right, now target the TH elements within your table body. So T body, TH, and give them a width of the entire container less, okay, so 100% is the entire container less 12 rem. So does that mean calc? I'm guessing it wants us to use calc here. So 100% minus 12 rem, like so. Let's try that. Hey, it does work. Awesome. All right. The attribute value selectors targets any elements that has an attribute with a specific value. Create a TR class total selector to target specifically your TR elements with the total class. Give it a bottom border of four pixel double. Okay. So border bottom four pixel double hashtag zero A. 0, oh, 0, A, 0, A, 23, that dark blue, and make the font bold, the font weight bold. There we go, total, double, um, double borders, okay. Using the same selector syntax, target the TH elements within your table rows where, where the class is total, target the TH elements, okay, within your table rows, um, within my table rows where the class is total. Okay, so I think I need this first. Something like that. And then align the text to the left. So text align of left and give them a padding of this. And I'm just going to copy that. Don't want to type that out. All right, so I gave it a little bit of padding there. The key difference between TR class total and TR dot total is with the first that the first will select TR elements where the only class is total. The second will select TR elements where the class includes total. Okay, I see. That's interesting. In your case, TR dot total will work. You can use this selector to target all TD elements within your dot total rows. Align the text to the right. Okay, so we'll go TR dot total. Target all TD elements within your dot total rows. Okay, so we need tr.total and td. Yeah, align the 
text to the right. So text align of right. Okay, dud a little bit, and then give them padding of 0.25 rem. Actually did do something. It moved it to the right a little bit. Um, and give them a padding of 0, 0 0.25. Like so. All right. Awesome. All right, the nth of type pseudo selectors used to target specific elements based on their order among siblings of the same type. Use the pseudo selector to target the third TD element within your total table rows. All right, so let's copy this. Target the third TD element. So we'll go TD, paste it in there, and then we want the third one, like so, I think. <laughs> uh, within your total table rows, give it a right padding of. Okay, go padding, padding right of 0 0.5 rem. Okay, let's see. If, I'm guessing I messed up. Yep, I need tr dot total. Oh, I see that first, and then that's right. Yep. Okay. Awesome. All right, give your tr dot total elements a hover effect. Total hover effect. Okay, so hover we can do that with colon hover and then we want to change the background to this I guess I can just use background instead of background color I think it works the same way it's like shorthand yeah okay. select your TD elements with the class value of current uh, TD dot current and make font italic so font style italic that's with font style. Ah, awesome. All right, select the TR elements with the class set to data. So tr.data. Give them a background image. Background image of this linear gradient. Okay. Um, interesting. Just made it gray. I suppose it went, if it's wider, then it looks decent. All right, step 61, select the TH elements within your tr.data elements. So we'll go tr.data, TH, and then align the text to the left. So text align left. Give them a top padding, so padding top, 0.3 rem, and a left padding, padding left of 0.5 rem. Okay, cool. Create a tr data dot description selector. All right, just grab that. To target the elements with the class set to description that are within your th elements in your data table rows. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting in the weeds, that's for sure. All right. Give them a block display. So display block. Make the text italic. So font style italic. And then normal weight, so font weight normal. And then position them with a the padding set to one rem. Okay, so padding set to one rem 0 0.75. Paste that. And a right margin, so margin right of negative 13.5 rem. Cool. All right, your span elements now have more specific styling, which means you can remove, remove your span rule. Okay, we'll get rid of that then. Cool. Your dollar amounts are currently misaligned. Create a selector to target the TD elements within your tr.data elements. So tr.data and then TD. Vertically align the text to the top. So text align pop not sure if that works um horizontally align the text to the right yeah i want this actually to the right set the padding to that i'm going to see what they have for aligning the text to the top see what they use they use vertical align ah okay vertical align can't say I've ever used that before. Uh, top. 
Sweet. All right, create another selector for the TD elements within your TR.data element, but specifically select the last one. Give this a bright padding of 0 0.5 rem. With this, your balance sheet is complete. Oh, it's so beautiful. Okay. Create another selector for the TD elements. So TR.data, TD. Uh, but specifically the last one. Okay, so I need uh, nth of last type, something like that. Hopefully that works. Uh, actually, what did I use? Nth of, nth of type. Nth of last type. Nth, wait, no, it's just last of type. Okay. Just last of type. Last of type, get rid of the parentheses, and then give the right padding. Okay, so padding right of 0 0.5 rem. Yay! We finished it, pretty sure. Yep, we finished it. Holy crap, that's the next thing we're going to build? <laughs> Are you kidding me? What the heck is this? It's a painting. This thing looks ridiculously uh, hard, actually. Uh, which I think there's a lot of steps on the next one. So, yeah, stay tuned for the next thing that we're going to build. Uh, the balance sheet came out pretty well, I guess. Uh, it was pretty repetitive. But hopefully you learned a lot. And I'll see you next time. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment. And I'll see you next time. Bye.